Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to create page types or custom route types per React and PsychoJSS. So, as we previously said in the introduction to components and page types, the idea is if I want to create an article page for instance that may have page title and main content and maybe an author, publish date and so on and so forth, I want to have this as fields within the page. Firstly, so that I can create a listing later on and filtration and other capabilities like that. And secondly, because every single article that's going to be created is going to have these fields as part of it. So it might as well be part of the fields. Let's see what I mean by with an example. I created here something called events. So every time I create a new event here, so I'll say insert, instead of having app route only, I'll have event as well. And if I create an event, the event is automatically going to have a headline, an author, some content, a start date, and an end date. Now, we discussed previously that the actual custom route type does not have any data or does not have any rendering. It only has data fields like this. So when I actually view it in Experience Editor, it's empty. So what I've done is I've also created a component here that shows me all this data in textual format. So let me just open it again with Experience Editor just to show you that this is in fact a component. So you can see that this is a component called event component. I can delete it. It can be deleted. I can add it again from my training series and event component. And I won't need to write any data because it's all reading from the page data. Now, let's see how to do that by creating a new type called um, article. So the first thing I need to do here is I'm going to use or copy and paste the same custom route type that has been created for us by Sycor. So this is in the sample application. It shows us how to create a custom route type. So first things first, I'm going to create a new file. I'll call it article route type.sycor.js. And I'll go to my custom route, copy it, and paste it in my article route type. The second thing I need to do is actually change the name here from example custom route type to article. And I'll have a display name of article as well. And the fields I want to change their names, I want to have this as title. I'll leave it actually let me make it like that and add display name of title with a capital T. And content and author. And I'm gonna need to add a new field which is my date so publish date publish date and display name is publish space date and its type should be date field so I'm just going to take it from here so what type is this Gonna cheat a bit here. And and I'll just add it like a standard value as well for it to be hashed now so that it's by default showing today's date. The second thing I'm gonna ha have here, or I've already I already have here 
from copying and pasting from custom route type is they actually add a component. Now, I don't need to really create a new definition file for the component because the component is not going to have any fields. So I can just add it here. So I'll call it event actually article component. Okay. So now that I've created my route type and I've defined that I need to add a component, the next thing is I need to actually add the HTML or the rendering for that particular component. The easiest way to do that is to actually scaffold the component. So I'll just as scaffold article component. But since I already created its definition here, the definition file that's going to be added for me, which is this one, I don't really need anymore. I could, of course, have just deleted this and used this one, but for me, it's not worth it to have a separate file for it, and it's just harder to maintain since it's going to be tightly coupled with my route type or my custom route type. So I'll just delete this one, and I'll go to my article component here. So this is the default article component. The only problem with this one is that, firstly, in order to read from the route type or from the actual page that this is hosted on, you need the Sitecore context. So I'll just copy this import here. So instead of just importing text, I'm importing with Sitecore context, text, rich text, and date field, because I'm going to use all these. I'm going to do a with Sitecore context. Oops. article component and my props are not going to be like this it's really going to be I'll just take a copy, copy it from here you can see how lazy I am I just like to copy it copy and paste ultimately okay so so what I've done here is I've got from the Sitecore context route the fields and then I can actually refer to them directly using the fields um, way like this. And what I'll do next is I'll actually go to my custom route type and I'll take this div from here just because I don't really like how this one looks. It just has a P and a text. This one has more data so I'll I'll use it as my starting point. So we have a field title, right? And what else? We have an author, that's the same. We have content, which is the same. And finally, we have a published date. We don't want this link, but we do want a published date. So what I'm going to do next is add a date field. What was my field called? Publish date. So that's my date field. Again, it's the same way exactly that I created the event component. Same thing, I created my article component. Now what this will do is it will now create a custom route type and it will create a component, but they're not linked together. For me, it's easier to link them directly from within Sitecore, so I'm going to show you this now once I deploy it. So until it loads, I'm actually going to sh refresh here just to show you what's being created. So you can see here that the article component has been created within the project layer. And now if I go back to my site, 
I should be able to add it here but since I haven't added it in the insert options it's not still gonna be visible so what I need to do now is actually go to my insert options so configure insert options and then go to my project layer training series and I see my article here I'll add it remember I'm gonna insert an article now just to show you so article 1 this will have a title and author content and a publish date like we expect so let's just add these And the publish date is today's date. Okay. But when I view it in Experience Editor, you're going to find an empty page. This is because, firstly, I haven't actually set any data, so I haven't told it that by default the component should be here. I can, of course, do that manually, so I can go in and just make sure that the article component is from the available renderings so I'll go to project training series and add the article component and then I'll go to training series and add the article component as soon as I add it all the content should be displayed here for the article that's weird oh I forgot to save that's my mistake so let me go back here Add it again because I overread it. Interesting. Okay, something is wrong right now, so let's debug. So first thing is, I want to see the presentation details. Two article components have been added in JSS main. Okay, let's go back to my article component. I must have mistyped something here. I did wrong. I forgot to fix it right with site core context in the correct way. I redeploy. now it's going to work. I'm just going to close some more pages until this finishes. Okay, now let's open it with Experience Editor again. And you can see here that the two components have been added. I'll just add it once. Now, the first thing you can realize here is that the header is not here. So I need to do that. So I need to go to Presentation. And you remember, I had the page design that defined what should be there so I'm gonna say if it's an article page show default and I'm gonna add page title article one 
and save and open to gain an experience editor. You can see the header and footer are there and the article. But if I create a new article here, it's still not going to have that component readily available. So it's going to have the footer, yes, correct. And the header, if I had a page title, because you remember we had this condition, this which chooses which one to render. So you can see the header and footer are there, but this is empty. Now, for me, the best way to actually have the component defaulted within the page is to go down to the actual component, so to the actual type. So we have here the article type, and go to its standard values, and then from presentation details, I'll just add it here. So I'll edit this one and add a control and go to the article component and add it in JSS main because that's my main placeholder. Now, you might forget the name of your uh, main placeholder. You can easily do that. Uh, see that by just using one of the articles you've previously added things to and see it here. Click on edit, control, and you can see the name here. So you're just mimicking what has been created for you here on the standard value. So here on the standard value, I have article component with the JSS main. Let's try to see if that works. So I'll create a new article. We'll call it article three. And then I'll add the title, article three. And author, I'll just keep it as article three. I'll add content. And I'll add a page title. Save it. And now when I go to Experience Editor, I shouldn't have to add the component manually. It should automatically be pre-populated for me. And this will apply to any new article you create. So if I create a new one, let's say Article 4. Save it and open it again. You're going to see that all the content has been added automatically. This is a really nifty way because it enables you now to firstly maintain your page type or your custom route directly from here. And secondly, it enables you to tightly couple your component with that route type or that page type so that every time a content editor is creating a new page, they can just add the content to it and update it. And of course, it has a WYSIWYG designer, so anything I update here is going to reflect back into my article here. You can see dates. I can configure from here as well. So I have all the flexibility that I'd expect from the experience editor directly from here. Thanks for watching and I hope now you got an understanding of how to create components and how to create route types. In the next video we're going to talk about how to create a listing page. So we're going to reutilize the article and events that we created here to create a list of events or a list of articles and we're going to see the different ways to do that using GraphQL and without GraphQL. Thanks for watching.